Okay, good afternoon to everybody. It's four o'clock, at least on my watch. Um, with your permission, uh, Mari, Kai, Kenneth, I can perhaps start. Very good. Okay, good afternoon and thank you all for joining us. Uh, my name is Pam Zarafa and I'm an education officer with the Ministry for Education and Employment in Malta. And I will be the host with you today. Um, let's get some technical matters perhaps out of the way. Can you all hear me, see me? Just a thumbs up would, yep, perfect, very good. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm sure you can all see my screen. Just a quick thumbs up to see if you can see my screen. Excellent, okay, very good. All right, um, obviously data protection, I'm just informing you that this webinar is being recorded. Um, if anyone has any objections, please, um, you can obviously switch off your cameras and just mute your mics. Um, also, for you to know that certificates will be sent to all participants via email by the end of this week. So if you want a certificate um, after this webinar, please register via this link. It is provided in the chat box um, in the chat box over there. OK, so please, if you want a certificate, simply click on that link and register via that link. OK, for obvious reasons, we have obviously muted your mics. However, the chat function is available to anyone who wishes to contribute during the presentations. Also, please feel free to contribute to discussion by raising your hand. The virtual hand would be just fine. And we will give you the space and time to do so, ideally at the end of the webinar. So please take note of your questions, comments, suggestions, insights, and we will sure to give you the opportunity to voice them after the presentations. Now that is out of the way. On behalf of Dr. Vella, I welcome you to this one hour webinar during which we will reveal the secret of Estonian education, which we hope will serve as a springboard to not only a healthy discussion today, but as food for thought to all of us here this afternoon. We would like to know who our audience is, and we do know that there are a number of people um, in this webinar. And since the number is too large, perhaps um, we kindly ask you to um, participate in our first Slido question. All you have to do, for those of you who might not be familiar with Slido, please go to slido.com and in the enter code here bar, simply enter the code 34774. Three one, three four seven, seven four three one. There is also the QR code there if you wish to simply scan that QR code. And I would like you to answer the first question again, just to get to know and get a feel of the audience here today. So our first question: What is your role in education? One word doesn't have to be an essay; just one word or two, just to tell us who you are, what your role in education is. So we have a head of college network, HCN. We have researchers present. We have assistant heads. We have teachers. We have educators. We're all educators here in some way or another. Um, we have a colleague of mine, uh, Ms. Padovani, head of studies. We have a student services manager, Different people, as I can see from different areas. We also have someone from marketing. Excellent. We have teachers here. Very good. I encourage you to participate, particularly to give us a feel of who the audience is. So far, we have 25 participants. Most of the people here, as you can see from the word um, wall, we have teachers and assistant heads. We also have heads of department here and education officers. So thank you very much for joining us. On to my next question for today. One thing I wish to take away from this webinar is, so just complete the sentence, and this would obviously gauge um, our speakers and their input a little bit better. So just a sentence, a phrase, you know, just something to tell us what you hope to take away from this webinar, what your own aim is. So one thing I wish to take away from this webinar. Excellent. Yes. Sharing of good practices, new knowledge. 
getting to know different educational systems to see how this system is better than ours. The grass is always greener, I guess. <laughs> Very good. Um, a lecturer from IFE, so to learn something new on quality education. Um, particularly, we have someone interested in inclusive practices. Very good digitization. Um, it is very obvious that most people want to see practices um, and perhaps different practices to our own in Malta. Some insights, very good, into pedagogy in particular. Very good, so new practices, different to our own. Policy frameworks, excellent. As you can see, all your... Um, Submissions are anonymous, okay? So, and you can submit more than one, so feel free to do so. Um, inclusion seems to be um, an item on people's agenda here, very good. So, mostly, as we can see, we have um, uh, people's aims seem to focus on practices as well as different educational systems, and perhaps, particularly, obviously, the Estonian educational systems and their knowledges and practices. Very good. Okay, so thank you very much for per participating in our Slido. Here is a brief overview of what we will be doing during the next hour or so before asking Dr. Vella um, to give his introductory message. So after his introductory speech on behalf of Education Estonia, Ms. Court and Ms. Rustic, um, who will be sharing their presentations and their insights, we will then have a brief Q&A where you can then um, perhaps pose your own questions, your own insights, and have your own discussion um, with the rest of the people with us today. Now allow me to introduce a head of school ambassador for Finland and Estonia, a great leader and a friend, His Excellency Dr. Kenneth Vella, to give his introductory message. Dr. Vella. Thanks, uh, Pamela. Uh, good afternoon, Pam. Good afternoon to you all. And may I give a special thanks and a warm welcome to our guest speakers today, Ms. Sky Court, Project Manager, Education and Youth Board, as well as Mari Rotstick, uh, Principal of Tartu Jamposka uh, Gymnasium, who will be presenting in today's webinar. Today's webinar, What is the Secret of Estonian Education, is one of a series of webinars discussing different educational services and tools offered by our Estonian colleagues. This webinar, which discusses the success and updates within the Estonian education system of uh, education, is organized in collaboration with the Education and Youth Board of Estonia, who have personally always supported me in my role as ambassador. Despite uh, the geographical differences and distances between Malta and Estonia, uh, these countries hold common values and aspirations as European partners. Malta and Estonia are both relatively small and historically young states in the European Union. Yet both countries are making impressive headway economically. Bilateral relations between Malta and Estonia have never been as good as they are presently and are going from strength to strength, particularly in our field, in the field of education. Estonia has made massive progress in this field and has excelled in international testing in the past years. This is therefore another opportunity to promote education and collaboration between Estonia and Malta even further. In February of last year, in collaboration with the Estonian Education Authority, and Harno, we had the pleasure of spearheading the first webinar on early childhood education Estonia, jointly held by Education Estonia, our office, and the Education and Youth Board. Furthermore, in March last year, MEDAC was honored to sign a memorandum of understanding with the Estonian School of Diplomacy, a first of its kind. The signing took place online. Moreover, a delegation from Malta Enterprise travelled this week to Tartu, in Estonia's second major city, to take part in the annual fair for startups. This is because we are doing our utmost to promote our country in various regions of Estonia and establish links not only with entities based 
in the Estonian capital city, Tallinn, but also with others around the country, like uh, Tartu, Saku, and Parnu. Today's session also complements other initiatives being taken in the field of education, tourism, sport tourism, culture, and digital technology between the two countries. So I leave you in the capable hands of Ms. Kai Court, who will be presenting general education challenges and opportunities, and Ms. Mari Rostig, who will be sharing with us a practitioner's view of how teachers take up these challenges. But before doing so, I would like also to take the opportunity to wish a happy Women's Day to you, Pamela, to Kai and to Mari, and to all our female participants. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dr. Vella. Um, I guess we, it's always Women's Day, so we shouldn't just celebrate one day, should we now, ladies? Um, okay, let's just move along, otherwise I'll just give you a speech on that. Um, as teachers do, um, we would like to first elicit what impressions of Estonian education you all have. So please, I promise you this is the last Slido for today. Um, I would like you to actively participate in this particular question. What do you think makes Estonian education successful? This is of particular interest to our two speakers today. And we will see, hopefully, if your predictions are correct. Mm. Qualified teachers, progressive education for students from a young age, a systemic approach, a growth mindset that it's extremely competitive, child-centered, digital. Teachers are respected more. Full trust and valued teachers. Having a clear vision, capital letter vision. They allow small breaks. They do not accept failures. They allow students to express themselves. The methodology, dedicated teachers, high expectations, long traditions. It's okay, just make sure you keep your mics muted, please, for the time being. Being innovative, objective-oriented, and perhaps we'll get these last few participants who seem to be typing. Go ahead. We would love to see what you think makes Estonian education successful. Teacher leadership, use of technology, Culture, which ties in very nicely with vision. The teachers have a passion for what they are doing. Teachers are appreciated. Okay, so I think it's very obvious, um, both Mari and Kai, that um, what the audience today seems to think that makes Estonian education successful, I think mostly focuses on teachers and how respected and trusted and um, perhaps qualified they are. Okay, we'll soon find out um, with the help of two wonderful ladies today, our speakers. Let me introduce you to Kai Court, who is a project manager, Education Estonia. Her job is to introduce Estonian educational solutions to the world and develop international cooperation. Ten years of working at school have provided a good basis for this. She has worked as an English and German teacher and as a development manager in different Estonian schools. A better understanding of the advantages and challenges of different education systems is provided by her international research experience in Japan, where she worked as a researcher teacher for one and a half years on a Japanese government scholarship. Kai believes that it is important for school development to be research-based and measurable. She also believes it's important that in addition to academic achievement, the school considers the well-being and empowerment of both students and teachers. And for our second speaker today, Mari Rostik, the headmaster of Tartu Posca Gymnasium. She has worked in education for over 10 years and has experience as a teacher and a deputy principal. She is one of the youngest head teachers in Estonia 
and very passionate about creating enjoyable and challenging learning experiences in schools for students and teachers alike. Marie has also been contributing to many different projects and programs, including designing the new career and competency framework for educational leaders in Estonia. Ladies, the floor is yours. Hey, hello everyone. Can you hear me? Can you see the slides normally? Like one slide? Okay, good. Because I see a different point of view. So, uh, thank you for the introduction. And so, first of all, about Estonia. Um, as said, Estonia is a relatively small country. We only have 1.3 million people uh, living in Estonia. Uh, and the area only covers 45 square kilometers. We are part of NATO and part of EU, and maybe what Estonia is most well known for is its e-country uh, and e-residency, because 99% of our public services are online. So what we do there is, for example, we file our taxes online and uh, we do voting online. And actually last week uh, uh, we set a record of e-voting on our governmental elections. Um, another thing that has uh, actually surprisingly, uh, maybe for some Estonians, uh, is the PISA result, and it has made Estonia a lot bigger. Um, Estonian students have shown very good results in all of the assessments that we have participated. We started in 2006, um, and we didn't really expect such good results. Uh, but students in Estonia have repeatedly shown that they are performing very well. Uh, we have increased the results in mathematics and uh, in reading, uh, and the results in science have uh, uh, sort of been the same. Uh, another thing that uh, sparkles out is that we have decreased uh, the number of low performers and we have increased the number of top performers. Uh, the students get that can solve uh, most complicated and most difficult tasks. Um, yeah, and if, if the question is what has uh, contributed to this high level of student achievement, um, it's, it's not so easy because behind the success, uh, there are different puzzle pieces which play their part. Uh, of course, it's students themselves, uh, the teachers who do a great job, and of course the uh, educational landscape that takes care of the students uh, who need additional help. Uh, we are such a small country, so we cannot leave anyone behind. So this is what the education system uh, looks today. Um, uh, sorry, Kai. Yes. I think you we are only seeing the first light actually really? yes oh, really? we didn't see the others then oh oh can you see it now yes yes <laughs> okay sorry this is the that. introductory one with uh, with the information about the country thank you yes yes okay this was the pizza result that uh, that i just uh... <laughs> okay thank you for for telling me uh, so this is uh, the education system today. Uh, basic education is minimum compulsory education. Uh, it starts at the age of seven uh, and it's from grades one to nine. Uh, at the end of year nine, they have to do exams, uh, three exams, uh, English exam. Uh, no, they have to do three exams, Estonian, math and the third one they can choose. But very popular is to pick English. Uh, then at the end of year 12, again, they have to do uh, three exams, uh, the same subject, subjects, Estonian, math and, uh, in, and language. It, uh, it can be also other language than English. And uh, also what they have to do is one creative work, which I will explain you a bit uh, later. Uh, 
uh, also maybe it's interesting to know that uh, in general education schools are mostly run by local governments and there are only 11 percent of private schools in Estonia. Uh, so now let's look uh, more closely at some of uh, some of the characteristics that Estonian education has. So first of all, it is free of charge. Uh, the basic education to higher education. Also, the school meals are free. Also, textbooks are free. So this means that the social economical background doesn't really play a role here because we try to manage it that everyone has a right to have a good education wherever they live and what their conditions are. Uh, the second thing is that uh, schools, principals and uh, teachers have a lot of autonomy. Um, of course, we have national curriculum, uh, but every school creates their own curriculum based on that. The national curriculum. also principals can decide um, the teachers salaries, who they hire, uh, what they spend their money on, etc. And teachers are free to decide how they teach the learning outcome outcomes set in the curriculum. Another feature is that teachers are very highly educated in Estonia. You have to have a master's degree to be a teacher here. Uh, another very, maybe interesting thing to know is that um, uh, we put a lot of focus on uh, external evaluation of learning outcomes because this gives uh, a valuable feedback uh, because we believe that what gets uh, measured gets cured. So if issues are visible, they are more likely to be dealt with. Um, uh, for, for example, we have level tests. Uh, those are mark-free competence-based uh, level tests that are made in year four and in year seven, and they are measuring linguistic, mathematical and scientific literacy. Um, the tests are offered uh, at the beginning of the school year, so both teachers and students can use the test results and feedback to enhance the learning. Uh, the principals and other stakeholders in education gain access only to the anonymous national overview. Uh, another maybe interesting uh, survey that is carried out uh, for five years already is satisfaction and the school environment survey that I just yesterday got uh, a letter if I let my daughter to participate in that because this again happens in year four, in year eight and in year 11. Uh, this is kind of this holistic approach of education at, that it's not only focusing on examination results, but also uh, measuring other parameters just as uh, sense of belonging and satisfaction and autonomy and self-directed learning and teacher collaboration. So those are made every year uh, with the students, uh, with the parents and uh, teachers in every three years. Uh, so, but the, those self-evaluation uh, um, methods are supportive in nature. And uh, this is the way that you can give responsibility back to the learners, to the schools, to the, uh, to the teachers, to, um, to really identify the challenges and take thoughtful action. And the ministry only um, uh, intervenes uh, as a last result. Uh, another thing that you also mentioned here that you are interested in, Estonia indeed has inclusive education system, which means that students with different learning abilities uh, study together in the same classroom. Uh, to tell you honestly, it has made the life of teachers uh, quite difficult. Uh, teachers have had to learn quite a lot uh, how to deal with different learning abilities. There are programs by the universities that uh, that offer courses that you can learn more. Um, and one one more thing is that we have uh, uh, all students are entitled to have free special support by the psychologist, the speech therapist. Uh, either at school or at the counselling centre, uh, which are located in every county. Uh, but I would say that the need is higher. We need more specialists than we uh, have currently. But uh, looking at the PISA, it seems to be working. But of course, we wish we would have more experts who would help the teachers. Another characteristic is hobby education because a lot of schools offer different extracurricular activities 
uh, uh, this, which um, in the in the last few years we have had this uh, whole day school approach that schools really would have quite a big selection of uh, extracurricular activities that the parents wouldn't have to be taxi drivers and uh, move their children uh, around the town. Um, a lot of them are free as well, but, uh, but some of them they have to pay for it. And now the problem is how to actually combine the formal education and the informal education, because if you go to a piano lesson, it makes sense that somehow it would be calculated as part of your curriculum, but this is the, the aim for the future. Uh, another thing that characterizes our education system is the study and holiday uh, that is well balanced. Uh, Estonia has one of the shortest uh, school uh, years. It's uh, 175 uh, days, 35 weeks. Uh, it is uh, divided into tri three trimesters and five periods, which is very nice because you have seven weeks of school, one week of holiday, seven weeks of school, one week of holiday. Here is the so-called uh, education three, uh, because we believe that the strength of the tree depends on its roots. Uh, of course, it starts with the family support. I think uh, the families, uh, the col collaboration between school and uh, and home is very important. I think our parents uh, trust the education system. Maybe they don't 100% agree with everything, but the trust is there. Uh, but because the education system has made quite uh, big changes in the recent years, then also the parents have to be educated. So uh, we, we shouldn't forget about them. But what is important here is that uh, if you are choosing one path, you can always jump from one branch to another and nothing is really fixed. So we really have this lifelong learning uh, um, happening here in Estonia that if you go to the schools in the evenings, you see that uh, there are those hobby classes taking place. If you go to the universities, you see they are always working in the evenings on the on the weekends because it's made very flexible for you to continue your studies. And of course, those uh, tears here are the support uh, that we really try hard not to leave anyone behind. Um, another thing that uh, it actually starts from the kindergarten already. This is the only time in Estonia where you actually have to pay for the schooling because it's not free, but the prices are quite reasonable and it's very, very popular to put your child in the kindergarten. Uh, the kindergartens have their own uh, curriculums, uh, they have their own study plans and the, the methods there are very playful. They are doing coding, but it's very fun coding and, uh, and, uh, and very popular to put your child in the preschool. Uh, this I already mentioned that everyone has the, uh, the right for the high quality education and the socioeconomic background has very low impact here. Um, a bit more about the, the autonomy, because this is such a big part in the Estonian education system. Uh, if you visit the Estonian schools, you might notice that the schools are very, very different because each school can choose their own focus, their own direction, and also the methods they, they want to use to reach them. Uh, the, the study goals are set for three years. But how the teacher does it in three years, how he or she meets the goals, it's really up for them. So this is the first uh, picture here that you can be very creative. And if you visit the lessons, the, the teacher really use very creative methods to, to um, motivate the students to learn. Uh, and as I mentioned, there is one thing uh, besides exams, they have to do creative work in year eight and in year 11. This calculates as exam. Uh, but really everything is given uh, free for you, whatever you are interested in. If you want to open your mini company, if you want to organize an event, then you have to choose and decide like what I want to be good at. And you have the whole year to work with this project. Then you have to analyze the process um, and also analyze yourself, how you grew in this. And I think this is a really, really good a step forward in this autonomy to have those creative work tasks in the education system. 
Um, then about in-service training and networking. Uh, Estonian teachers don't have any like particular number of lessons or courses they have to take in year. Uh, however, the teachers are very active in, in uh, training and learning. Uh, maybe one of the reasons is that the, the in-service teacher trainings are taught by practitioners, uh, the in-service uh, teachers who really know what is happening in schools and what they need. Uh, the, the learning is very flexible. Uh, this means that you can have online lessons, you can have uh, lectures on the spot, you can go alone, you can go with your uh, team at your school. So this has made it very uh, convenient for the teachers. Uh, one more good feature that Estonian school have is uh, interviews for development. Once a year, as a class teacher, you have to do an interview with all of your students to set the goals, to find the right path. Again, it says somebody wants to take over. <laughs> somebody changes the slides. It's OK, go on, Kai. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll try to perhaps. Um... OK, can you see the in-service training? Yes. <laughs> OK, uh, and the same thing with the de development interviews happens with the teachers and the principal that once a year you meet and you really take this time to ask how are you doing and set the new goals. Another feature is networking, that there are a lot of networking opportunities for Estonian teachers. There is, for example, the Association of Educational Technologists. Whenever the, our educational technologist comes from those meetings, she's very inspired and has a lot of energy to share all the new knowledge that she has gained. There are other networking places that you can, if you want to uh, learn more about uh, mental health issues or you want to make sure that your class is moving more so there are so many uh, facebook groups and networking places that you can join and teachers really sincerely share their good practices uh, but of course like in uh, in every uh, uh, every first country i would say uh, the mental health issues are uh, a thing here uh, if you're working with people, it can be quite emotional and challenging and tiring. And, uh, and of course, teachers themselves are quite demanding for, uh, for themselves as well. Uh, and if you don't know how to take care of yourself, uh, you can very quickly burn out. Uh, the mental health problems are statistically more common for girls than boys. And actually, the problems increase with age. Um, uh, we had a presidential speech on our Independence Day where he talked a lot about the education in general, but also about youth mental health. And he said that we need a new tiger leap um, to teach young people how to manage their emotions. What we have done so far, we have prevention programs in schools. All schools have to choose at least one program uh, and this sets like how or the methods, how it should be uh, dealt with, uh, the lesson plans, etc. There are also parent education groups, um, how parents can uh, deal with the mental health issues that their children might have. There is a possibility for teachers to join mental health first aid training. Uh, those are free, again, very flexible way to get knowledge about this important issue. Uh, quiet minutes are very important in Estonia. So very often the teachers start their lesson with that. It means that the students are not there only uh, physically, but also mentally. They come here, uh, some breathing exercises, which is very popular. Then there are some edtech solutions uh, that try to contribute. Uh, now my slide is gone that try to contribute uh, uh, to the mental health issues as well. Uh, maybe you have heard there was a webinar about uh, the edtech companies that Estonia has. One is uh, Clanbeat and the other one is Trime Health. Uh, and actually in Estonia this year we have a movement year, so it means that all uh, schools are really trying to focus on how to make students move more. Also, 
besides movement, the nutrition and sleep are very important. So those are the issues that are very often discussed in schools as well. Almost done. <laughs> Another issue is empowering teachers, because I think this also is quite universal problem that we don't have enough uh, teachers. Uh, in our case, it's uh, even more acute because we have a lot of aging teachers and not so many new teachers are coming. Uh, the problem is also a teacher burnout that a lot of teachers uh, um, leave their position in three years. Uh, main reasons are, are discipline problems and sometimes overcritical parents. Um, but what have we done so far? Is uh, we have raised the uh, teachers' salaries. The salaries haven't been uh, very good for Estonian teachers, but this year it was raised 23.9%, and we really hope that it will continue. Another thing that we are trying to say make is making the teaching profession more popular. Uh, we have education spokesperson programs. Uh, it's called Teachers Create Tomorrow's Estonia. This actually brings together those really shiny, bright, brilliant teachers who demonstrate the impact and potential of this work. Um, and because only teachers can really show uh, the life uh, of a teacher, like promote the life of a teacher. Then we have career change programs uh, to attract experts from different fields of uh, work to work in schools. And then we have a lot of uh, support systems uh, because when you're working with people, uh, it's really good if you can share your stories. So we have study sessions happening in schools where teachers come together and share practices. Uh, sometimes the universities are involved, but sometimes it's just important that you do something with your colleagues that is not work related, but just uh, um, builds your team. And, uh, and last, uh, very important thing is empowering school leaders to improve the management uh, culture in schools, which uh, Mari can uh, talk more about. How do we actually empower the school leaders that they would have strength uh, to, to empower teachers? And now the really last slide uh, is what our previous president, Thomas Hendrik Hilves, has said that uh, we truly think that the best thing we can give to our children is not land, house or bank account, but good education. Aita. And I'm sorry, you couldn't see the slides the way they were supposed to. Thank you. Thank you, Kai. Um, perhaps now we can move on to um, uh, Mari, unless yes. there are particular particular questions um i suggest that you we do have a question in the chat um kai perhaps until you stop sharing and mari starts sharing you can address that question mario Sopardi asked are these mental health programs for staff or also for students kai Um, I can't hear her. I don't know whether she's still here. It doesn't matter. It's okay. Kai, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I couldn't stop oh. sharing. I don't know what was the problem. Okay. Did you hear my question, Kai? Uh, the question was, are those, uh, maybe you can answer, ask one more time, please. Are those mental health programs that you mentioned earlier on for staff or also for students? And Mr. Mario Zappardi is asking. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for, for both, actually. There are very good uh, websites. It's called BASI.de, which has a lot of information for the youngsters, for the children. There is also a helpline that they can call, which is quite popular. So there are programs for students and for teachers. Thank you, Kai. Perhaps now we can move on to Mari's presentation. Mari? Yes, do you hear me? Can you hear me? Do you see me? Yes. Something? Okay, okay, then it's good. Yes. Um, maybe you can, Pamela, share my slides, just, just in case. Okay, no problem at all. Okay? So maybe you can stop sharing and I'll share your slides. Not a okay, problem at all. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, nee. Is that okay? That's nee. fine, no problem at all. Okay, okay. 
if everything's working, then I will just start. Uh, yes, please yes. do. Okay, so a uh, good evening from me, everyone. Thank you, Kai. And now I'm uh, trying to describe how we actually do everything that's so amazing that Kai already told you about. I will not give you an overview of the laws and I will not describe what a good school leader has to do. I think everyone already knows that. But I will give you a fair, but you will get a fairly deep understanding of how much of uh, most of Estonia school leaders think. And uh, I think the way we think is the biggest shift in school leadership that we can actually um, reveal as our secret uh, to the uh, success of Estonian education. And I'm mostly going to talk about. Uh, why all the principals should have a mindset of a top-notch CEO. Um, and I think um, I will elaborate that a bit more because um, we have so many challenges in Estonia ahead of us. We have shortage of new teachers and um, we are competing with all the scale-ups and startups and big organizations. So we kind of have to make schools um, promising organizations for young adults that they want to um, commit to. So if I'm going to be a teacher, then I should know that when I go to school, I have these one-on-ones, I have some benefits, I have a possible, I have a possibility to evolve my career in our school, that I don't have to be a teacher for the rest of my life, and that I have some different ways of using my potential in our schools. So we have to make schools as... Um, Mm, presentable and as um, mm, amazing as some kind of uh, wise or bolt or whatever the big organizations are. And also, um, this is uh, the, the thing that I talked about is the mental health. And uh, I, as a principal, have been focusing uh, mostly for the two years that I've been a principal on mental health of teachers. So I get to talk to them a lot and we have lots of help and supervisions and co-visions and a lot of teamwork so that I, I always do the temperature check with my teachers so I know where they are, how they're feeling, what are the most uh, mm, challenging things for them. So you saw the agenda and now I'm going to tell you uh, why I do think that principal have, uh, principals have to think like top-notch CEOs. Because um, strategic planning, when I started um, as a school head, the first thing I did we, with our team, we, we made a strategic plan for seven years and I included every, every teacher. So the commit, it's not just my plan and my vision and my mission that I want to accomplish with my organization. It's everyone's vision. And if I get them to commit on uh, like only four topics, then I've done the work really good. So we 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 chose four four topics, uh, and then we made some we made four teams, and every team is responsible for delivering the objects and delivering the goals. And every when the every year starts, we still we have this seminar, and then we figure out okay, last year's goal was this. Okay, we got to this point. We are measuring mm, our, our way, and then we set the next uh, goal for the next year. So we're doing it year by year by year, and we always have this big goal in front of us. And every um, profitable organization does the same. We have to make strategic planning. And uh, of course, there's always talk about money and the resources. There's never enough money in education, no matter how big of a country, how rich of a country are, there's never enough money. But if we're always talking about there's no money, then nothing's going to change. We have our budgets and in Estonia, I have the full autonomy to do everything I want within the budget. So I have to think like a CEO. If I have this goal, like uh, this year, we are focusing on how to measure uh, student self-management. Then I will put my resources into this, to making this tool. Maybe next year we are focusing on teachers' uh, professional development. Then I will put all the resources into training, into one-on-ones, into coaching. 
I do have to do it within a budget, but I can switch it from year to year and I always have the big goal in mind. Where do we want to uh, take our school? Um, leadership and management, it's also important. I think we have been focusing a lot um, in education in Estonia as well, a lot into students and into parents, like they have to be really satisfied with everything. Uh, everything has to be really polite. We can't say anything. But the thing is that teachers, um, they burn out very quickly. I remember when I was um, when I was a teacher and I, and I got to my third year, I thought that I'm going to quit because this job is so hard. I can't do it and no one's supporting me. So uh, I have to. As a leader, I have to make sure that the people who are delivering uh, the results and the people who are dealing with students every day and who has to have to deliver the curriculum, they really have to be um, happy, healthy, and they have to have a little sparkle in their eye, like I have all the time. And maybe and it's six o'clock in the evening and I'm still absolutely passionate about uh, my school and everything I'm talking about. So. I do have to work with people and for people. And I think that's important shift uh, in mindset. Of course, we have to measure the performance of teachers as well as students. And uh, like I told you, we don't have this evaluation that they're like making top 10 schools that are best because uh, they have this and this and this. Ministry of Education gives us feedback. They give us input that we can use to develop our curriculum, our students, our teams. It's not like top down evaluation. It's more of a partnership. And that gives us the autonomy that we give forward to our teachers as trust. I trust every teacher I have. I don't have to check what they're doing in classes because I trust them. I chose them. I trained them. They're my team. They're my people. I have to trust them. Uh, because it's, I am accountable if they're doing something wrong. I chose them, I gave them the responsibility. And of course, uh, I have to communicate with parents, students, the community. I have to know where my organization is um, positioning in this uh, municipality. Tartu is the second largest city in Estonia. My gymnasium is optional. I get to choose my students. I'm a really, really lucky headmaster. I get to choose. I, I only have 190 spots for year 10, but the applicants, I have a thousand applicants. So I'm a I'm really lucky one. And since I have that kind of students, it also makes um, my school uh, a bit more, um, teachers want to come and teach in my school because they know that the students who are learning they have high, high ambition, maybe. So overall, a principal with a CEO mindset can lead their school to, su to success by developing a strategic plan, uh, allocating resources effectively, managing personnel, measuring performance of students and teachers, and I have to communicate very effectively with my partners. So uh, uh, next slide, please. Mm, uh, so what are we doing differently? I think the uh, most important thing that we are doing differently is that uh, we are doing nothing differently. We have so much autonomy, uh, autonomy and we give it forward as trust. And we think differently. We have this growth mindset and I think therefore we as leaders act differently. But to um, name some points that what we are actually doing differently, um, I think the emphasis on continuous professional de development, as Kai said, teachers have a lot of networking, but it can't only be between the schools or the cities. It has to be in organizations, um, within the organizations as well. So I have four teams that are working towards this strategic plan and goals we have. And within the teams, we have smaller teams and every teacher in my team, they have this personal development uh, plan and they are discussing it with their team leads, not with me. I speak with uh, this, uh, my teachers basically every day. But yes, we do. We have this developing uh, conversations, but every teacher has this one on one meetings with their team leads. So I'm I, I'm making uh, this uh, 
I don't know how, how I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it. Um, uh, I'm trying to make smaller teams that uh, the teachers can talk uh, about their problems a bit more and they can find the solutions within themselves. So professional, continuous professional development is really important. Uh, and I really, I think most of our uh, headmasters focus on co collaboration and teamwork. And we do it between ourselves and we try to, um, sorry, I, I, I lost, the, I, <laughs> and the, as I, we're focusing on collaboration, uh, collaboration and teamwork. And this means that we have bigger management teams and teachers usually have more than one role. For example, in my school, most of the management uh, still teaches. I think it's probably 30% teaching and 70% being mid-level manager or a team lead. This also creates the variety in job. People can level up or level down depending on their ambition or current life situation. And the autonomy gives me opportunities to, to design my team's task the way that uh, uh, these are uh, these uh, the tasks are 100% aligned with our goals and objectives. So. Mm, and the last thing, empowering uh, school autonomy. This, uh, like I already said, and like Guy already said, we get feedback on different aspects. Uh, Ministry of Education is our partner, the same as the mun municipality. And yes, of course, if it's clear that um, I, as a headmaster, I'm breaking the law or, or ministry sees that national curriculum is not delivered, then there are consequences and I might lose my job. But the point remains, if we have that much autonomy, it will also create a healthy competition and no CEO wants to leave behind. So it's like a healthy competition between the headmasters as well. Although um, I don't have this um, fixed uh, um, uh, agreement. If I start as a headmaster, I can basically, basically work for the rest of my life as a headmaster. I don't have this fixed agreement, but if I want to be better, then I have to uh, learn a lot all the time. And, and I think that uh, we have that much digital environment and we have little or no support or no bureaucracy that makes uh, my job easier as well. I don't have to make any reports at the end of the year. Everything I have to do is in uh, Google Drive. Uh, in our school, basically everything we do, we do it in Drive and we and um, and the uh, digitalization gives us the opportunity to be really really data driven as well uh, and how uh, who and how are supporting us as headmasters i really want to point out that estonian headmasters association has uh, become uh, a really really strong association because like i already like uh, in the Mm, introduction, Pamela said, we as Headmasters Association, we decided that we need a new competence and career framework. It's not that ministry is going to tell us that we have to have that kind of skill set, but we decided that we're going to raise the standards uh, within the guild. So we are building the Headmasters brand from from the point that we want to be better and we decided that we're going to do a framework and then then we can use it as a tool for self-development and my and ministry can also use it to evaluate us if they want to but the thing is that um, the estonian headmasters association we are partners everywhere in ministry within universities councils we're partners everywhere and uh, I think that's really, really important thing. Educational Ministry and Harno, they are also mm, really, really good partners because uh, we have so many leadership programs for aspiring leaders and begin beginners. And we have so many different ways how to learn and how to educate ourselves as leaders. And the third, the third sector and supporting initiatives uh, we have this internship program for educational leaders. It means that headmasters um, can go into this, um, into some kind of really big companies like Verif or uh, some banks, uh, maybe El Jave or Svetbank, 
and we can spend 10 weeks in that company. Right now, I am in very, I haven't been in my school for seven weeks and I have been learning in very, uh, and I have this mentor there and every week I go to work at very, and the municipality is paying for it, of course. It's not the really, really, for me, I don't pay anything. And I get my salary every month, full salary. But I have 10 weeks away from my job, so I can learn how to manage changes, how to make my organization more efficient, how to build teams. And the things that I have learned in seven weeks, I, I can't remember ever learning that mu much or that hard. And it also gave me really, really good insight on uh, how exhausting it is to learn so intensively. It's, and I know that when I have a new teacher coming in, um, in autumn, I'm not going to put him or her through that what I am experiencing at the moment. This uh, this uh, learning has been amazing, eye opening, but it really has been exhausting. So the uh, the CEO mindset and the focus of my presentation is a bit uh, um, coming from the place where I am. Seven weeks in Verif, a scale up uh, with uh, 500 people, uh, really, really uh, fast growing company, the average age in Verif is 32. In my school, it's 42. So it's, it's really different how they are leading, but there are so many things that I can uh, take with me back to school. And this is, um, these are the three, uh, three basic partners. And uh, I think the next slide, Pamela, maybe. Uh, yes. Yes, so basically that's what I've already told, but I will sum it up really, really fast. I really focus on teacher training. Every teacher has to have their professional development plan and it has to come from data, from students' feedback, and it has to be um, scientific, scientifically proved all the research that we do in our school. Uh, and decisions that teachers are making, they, I, have to, I would really love them to... Um, focus on their strengths, not only on the weaknesses. It's just like with students. So focusing on teacher training, I trust my teachers to do the right decisions and the decision making is data driven. And collaborative le leadership, it really means that I have a management team of 10 and I uh, may work really hard to keep them happy. The 10 people will, give, will keep the next 20 or 30 people happy. And that's how I can Mm, uh, take a bit some a bit load from my from my shoulders to give the mid-level managers so it's not only on me and of course we have to uh, focus on e equity providing equal opportunities for all the students regardless of their socioeconomic background we, we basically don't have that in Estonia at all and uh, I had uh, uh, yeah Pamela next sli slide please uh, I had two questions for you, but I don't know if we have time uh, to ask those questions from you. So maybe if you have questions for me and Kai, I'm happy to answer your questions now. Hi, perhaps at this point, I, I agree with you, Marie, perhaps we can take some questions. We do have a number of questions in chat and it is five past five. So I think it's time to take some questions. Um, I am sorting out the registration link somehow. Jotform um, is playing up, but that will be sorted out. Um, Kai and Marie, perhaps I can now ask you some questions which we have in chat. Um, one of the questions um, at the beginning uh, was, can parents who are not teachers participate in mental health programs? I think, Kai, this is addressed to you. There are different programs, some for the parents, some for the students and some for the teachers. So they are, they can all participate, but uh, they're not together. If this was the question. Okay. 
because I they would all... Wanted... Hmm? Sorry, Kai, go on. Hmm? Uh, there was this link posted, it's in Estonian, maybe the automatic translator will, will change it, because there are a lot of materials to to discuss uh, the topic, and I think this is really the most uh, discussed topic right now in any TV show that you open. It's always the mental health issues and uh, how how to how to prevent them before they really uh, get really bad. Okay, um, we have uh, Mr. Joseph Briffa. Um, vocational education can be acquired in Estonia. And he was asking about the structure, um, asking that uh, if there are different levels of attainment. I know that you posted the, the tree um, there. I don't know whether you want to elaborate on that, Kai. Of the vocational education. Uh, about that, structure, we will yes. have a separate uh, uh, webinar to discuss it. So maybe this would be discussed uh, then uh, next time. OK, um, we have a Joanne Mifsud who asked about school autonomy. Are teachers chosen by the school leadership team and are all teachers qualified? I think, Marie, you mentioned this um, in your presentation. Um, perhaps you can elaborate a little bit on that, please. Yes, uh, I, I can choose all the teachers. And if you ask, are they all uh, qualified, then um, I say 90% Yes, they are, because in gymnasium you can't uh, teach over a year if you don't have the master's degree. So uh, I can make a one year agreement with the teacher and on the basis that he or she will have the master's degree by the end of the year. And if he or she doesn't, then I will not um, take the next uh, year with him or her. So the answer is yes, all teachers have to be qualified and the way that we have this uh, one year agreement then we can make them go and <laughs> do their master's degrees so if i understood you correctly because this is very interesting um mari so you have higher and pi higher and firepower there yes okay all right i do have a number of questions myself but i'll allow the audience to perhaps continue asking um, uh, how much input do parents have in the choice of education of their children? Again, Mari, I think this is addressed to you. Guy, maybe you can help me out, but I think it's, uh, I think if uh, they really don't have that much, they chose the school and then basically that's it. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yes. Yes, I agree. The parents, uh, I think a lot of burden has been taken from the parents' shoulders, so uh, schools take a lot of responsibility in terms of uh, uh, eating and moving, and uh, and sometimes the parents are even asking, like, can you can you help me with uh, this issue that I don't know how to deal with it. So I think a lot of responsibility is given to the schools, and uh, and and parents. Uh, well, here even if the, this the, the parents can choose the school, it's not really correct because uh, uh, mostly you will go to the school that is closest to you. And then there are a few schools that have uh, entry exams, but generally you are you can uh, give a choice, like three schools where you would like your child to go. And this is the input that you can give, basically. Not much more. Then you just have okay. to have trust. I think that's, that's the key word in this seminar, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I, we have another question. Um, Noel, a colleague of mine, um, spoke about how how you actually spoke about data driven decisions and the importance of measuring performance can you elaborate on the tools that you use to obtain this data and measure performance please um i i'm being uh, i can uh, just uh, meet you personally and i can show you all the tools that we have uh, designed for our school because it's i i have to show them to you and they are um, my teachers and teams they have developed it specifically to our school and our needs the way that our school curriculum is made so it's a definitely a thing i would like to share and i will I can take my teachers with you, the ones who made the tool, and we can have a separate meeting for that. And we can share some data with you as well, because we're still in the process of uh, fixing it and uh, making it better. 
Thank you, Mari. Another question. How are students who want to offer management courses prepared for this, since management courses are not offered in Estonian courses? If I understood correctly, perhaps um, I don't know how to pronounce your name properly, and I probably won't do justice to it. Um, you can unmute your mics and feel free to ask that question. Um, Bim Abimbola. Go ahead, we can hear Hello. you. Go okay, ahead. I'm, Go ahead. okay, I noticed that in schools in Estonia, we, we um, subjects like um, economics, bookkeeping are not offered here. So I was just wondering how students who don't really have an interest for science courses, but would prefer managerial courses. How are they mm -hmm. prepared for it? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay. I, I think I understood I the think questions. Question. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, these uh, courses uh, are offered by gymnasiums, uh, grade from 10 to 12, and it really depends on the gymnasium if we are offering the management courses. But since the hobby education is also a part of uh, curriculum in Estonia and we can int integrate it, when some student w goes to a uh, accredited course and uh, mm, learns education or uh, le sorry learns economics or bookkeeping or whatever and then uh, he comes to school with a certificate then we are um, then we take it the, as a part of our curriculum. If we don't offer it, we always try to find ways that our students can learn what they want to learn with our partners, maybe universities or some other schools. Okay, thank you. Um, we also have another question from Ms. Camilleri. With regards to the one week at school and one week holiday, um, it seems to have gone down very well with our audience today. Do parents complain? What do they do with their kids when they need to go to work? You mean the seven weeks of school and one week one week of holiday? Exactly, exactly. Uh -huh. the seven no. weeks at school and the one week of holiday. No, they don't complain because they really see it. It's, the Estonian school year is so short. It's very intense. The, the days are very intense. So the kids are usually very tired when they come from uh, work. And uh, I think the... If you say, like, uh, how are the, the parents involved in the school system? They are, because if you talk to the parents, uh, they say, like, oh, finally, we have the holiday. We can finally breathe and we can, like, go go and uh, go hiking or something. So I think everyone really understands that this seven week of uh, hard work needs this one week of uh, just relaxing and letting the knowledge sink in, which is very Estonian thing to just take time, take pause, let the knowledge come in so they don't okay. complain and also we have very long summer holidays and i have been asked uh, a lot about that like what do children do then when they have like almost three months of holiday it's never a problem this is the time when they read a lot of books because estonia is also really high in also number one in reading books and this is what they do during summer the the weather is really nice very sunny you go outdoors you help your parents so uh, holiday is not a problem in estonia um, thank you, Kai. What is the homework policy in Estonia? Do well, teachers assign homework? Yeah, this is uh, again connected with autonomy. The, the school decides how much uh, homework is uh, needed and I think it's uh, a little bit is, is necessary to have but it really depends uh, on the school. There are schools who give no homework, there are schools who give a lot of homework and um, yeah, I don't have a good uh, answer for that. Marie, can you add something? How much homework is good homework? <laughs> no homework is uh, is the best uh, homework uh, to just discover everything else and walk and wander and listen and read. That's the best homework. But I think from grade from one to grade four, it's not. Uh, kind of suitable to get home to leave homework for students and from that on if the homework has a special goal and the work serves the goal I don't see why not 
Okay, um, I think we've covered all the questions in chat and I'm fully aware of the time. Are there any other questions? Um, I do have two, uh, two important questions which I think um, affect particularly our, our educational system. Um, you mentioned autonomy a lot, Mari and, and Kai. What about teacher unions? Do they in any way affect decisions taken at school level? Um, since the teachers union uh, boss is a teacher in my school, I, I have a lot to deal with in my school life, but uh, he is a really, really good partner. And I think the teachers union is mostly a voice that tells that this uh, profession is an amazing profession, but we just need to get m more salary, more money into teachers' salary. That's it. Uh, they don't take any other uh, decisions in our school. It's partnership because he is reasonable. We can reason on everything. It takes time, but we can reason on anything. Thank you, Mari. I would love to meet this person myself. David, I know you have a question. I'd like to ask you two questions. First of all, what's the average size of each class? What's the average size of each class? And the second question is, how are the groups in each class formed? How are they formed? By ability or speaks ability or what's what's the criteria? Or... Again, there are very, very different uh, schools in size. There are schools that only have 50 students in some rural areas, uh, which is very common. Uh, and then in big city schools, you usually have about 30 kids in one class, 28 or something. So it, it really depends, uh, very different sizes. And how they are put together, unfortunately, it's still mostly on the year you were born. <laughs> Nothing really has changed. But uh, there are some schools who have uh, like uh, tempo groups, for example, in basic uh, uh, subjects like in math, uh, they usually in some schools have that if you are faster, you can go to this group. Uh, in my son's class, uh, in my son's school, they are divided this way. Um, but I don't know that in numbers, um, how many, it's really, again, uh, connected with the autonomy, the schools can decide if they find it relevant to have the tempo groups or not. I think there are more uh, schools that uh, just uh, have them all together and they don't form any groups. But uh, this is just the feeling I have. Mari, can you add something? Mm -hmm. uh, from grade one to grade nine, the law says that you can't have more than 24 kids in a classroom. But if the parents agree, then you can level it up to 28. And all the prestigious schools, they have 28 uh, kids in a classroom. But uh, in gymnasiums, like for example, in my school, I have 38 kids in one classroom. 30. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for your answer. Okay, that's a very big class, actually. Um, we have Miss Camilleri. Miss Camilleri will take your question as the last question. If you would like to perhaps um, unmute your mic. Or else I can read the question. How does Estonia support low performing students to ensure equity and inclusiveness? Well, there are a lot of freedom for the teacher to support the child. You can give them uh, extra materials. They are allowed to use materials also during their exam. If they need more time, you can give them more time. If they need extra room, they can have extra room. So you can even differentiate the, the, um, the grading. So then it comes like four with D. This means that this is like... Uh, differentiate the D. So there's a lot of lot of uh, freedom for the teacher to support the way that the, the best he or she knows. Uh, and actually, this is the question, like if, if a child gets a bad uh, mark, sometimes the teachers are asked, like, what have you done to support this child? So that's why we have quite a lot of um, uh, support from our um, like support groups support in schools. Group, yeah. Support psychologists and uh, yeah. So you will ask them like, how should I change uh, the work that this child would be able to read it, or if she's not willing to write it, how can I change the the topics or the outcomes that uh, he or she would still learn on a certain level? 
Okay, um, I think we have now, uh, we do now have to conclude. Let me Can share I ask one link. last question, please? Please do, please do, Dr. Vella. The link um, for the registration is there again. Thank you. Perhaps um, our special guest could also elaborate about the Headmasters Association or the School Leaders Association, because for us, it's something also very interesting to know more. Mm. Uh, you mean the Headmasters As Association? Yes. Uh, is it a, is it a trade union? Is it just an association when one it's could just an association. share? It's just an association. There's no union. And we are not basic. We are not giving out any any certificates or something else. We are just headmasters who are networking, and with uh, and the union is uh, thirty years old now. Sorry, not union. The association is uh, thirty years old, and uh, and the headmasters belong there, and also deputy principals as well, because we consider them as school leaders as well, and also. Uh, there's, if you want to know more about the Headmasters Association, then I specifically know a guy who is the boss of this association and I can connect you with him. So maybe you can have on a board level, um, you can have a meeting. Thank you very much. OK, I think at this point um, it is time to conclude. Um, let me please remind you to uh, write your title, name and surname in the link that I've just posted now. Um, we would really appreciate that if you would like a certificate at the end of this session. And um, please, to conclude, I think after this very fruitful an informative session. We realize that there is no perfect system. Marie made it very clear that it involves a lot of hard work. There's no magic in it. It's just simply people investing in education and investing in our teachers. I think it is as simple as that. Educators need to be, in my opinion, I think they need to be qualified and trained. They need to be upskilled. They need to be well paid, not paid, well paid, empowered, and trusted and perhaps a very important word respected so i would like you on that note to thank you all for participating for your contributions and we look forward to seeing you all in our upcoming webinars um, and perhaps we can take up some of the ideas that some of our audience presented today because they seem to want to know more we'll announce the details of these webinars in due course and we will send you an email very shortly um, thank you very much and we wish you all a pleasant evening.